both in the East and the West, strategic planning has always been regarded as a crucial factor. Great strategists and commanders are able to maneuver behind the scenes and secure victory from thousands of miles away. The key to their success lies in strategic planning. The art of war begins by emphasizing the importance of strategic planning, delving into the role of thorough consideration and meticulous planning in warfare, while also presenting specific methods for implementing strategies. So, what viewpoints does the art of war offer on strategic planning? And what insights can we draw from these viewpoints in our real lives? As I mentioned in the first episode, why should even ordinary people read The Art of War? The answer is actually quite simple. The Art of War is a treatise on methodology. As Marx said, the essence of science is in its methodology. With the right methodology, things can be different. Einstein also once said, human beings solve problems through their brains. The art of war guides us in thinking about and solving problems. Therefore, not only military personnel but also people from other fields have developed a keen interest in the art of war. The term strategy is familiar to modern people, and in the art of war, Sun Tzu's very first sentence states, war is a matter of vital importance to the state, a matter of life or death, the road either to survival or to ruin. Hence, it is imperative that it be studied thoroughly. War is a significant affair of the state, directly related to life and death, survival and destruction. Therefore, we must study it earnestly, treat it seriously, and think deeply about it because it directly impacts the survival of nations and the lives of people. This is the important viewpoint of the art of war regarding strategic planning, and these viewpoints can also inspire us in our real lives. Here, we can observe several important viewpoints. Firstly, the affairs of the state are of utmost importance, and war occupies such a position. It involves the life and death, the survival and destruction of a nation, thus holding tremendous significance. Secondly, significant affairs should not be excessive, as too many significant affairs can exhaust one's energy. Whether it is a nation, a team, or an individual, it is important to avoid having too many significant affairs. There is no one-size-fits-all solution for addressing all significant affairs. Instead, we must focus on tackling the most crucial ones, and war is undoubtedly among the most important matters. Thirdly, since the state has significant affairs and they should not be excessive, how do we determine what constitutes a significant affair and what does not? For a ruler, only matters related to the life and death, survival and destruction of the nation are truly significant, while those unrelated to such matters should be handled by subordinate managers. Thus, management is hierarchical, which is also a vital concept in modern management. It is noteworthy that Sun Tzu proposed such viewpoints over 2,500 years ago. The art of war teaches us how to handle affairs. A significant affair is a matter of direction, it is inevitably the most important. A ruler should gather the wisdom of ministers, listen to their opinions, and establish the correct direction, which is precisely what strategy embodies. If the direction is chosen correctly, everything else will align accordingly. It tells us that formulating the right strategy is crucial. With a well-formulated strategy, even if tactics are slightly inferior or technology is somewhat weaker, the objectives can still be achieved, albeit with potential delays. Of course, if the tactics are better, the results will be more favorable, and success can be achieved more efficiently. Hence, we must carefully choose our strategies. In terms of the significance of strategy, Sun Tzu explicitly states, calculate more for victory, calculate less for potential defeat, and what about not calculating at all? By observing this, victory or defeat becomes apparent. My understanding is that the more thorough the strategic planning, the higher the probability of success. Conversely, if the strategic planning is inadequate, the chances of victory diminish, 
let alone without any planning. We can judge the outcome based on this point. Therefore, in our daily work, it is essential to handle strategic matters well because they involve the direction. So, how should we plan our strategies? The Art of War serves as a military treatise on strategic planning. It is a methodology that, through hierarchical thinking, guides us step by step on how to approach strategic planning and where to start. Strategic planning covers various aspects, but we cannot address them all, we must focus on the most critical ones. In the Calculations chapter of The Art of War, it summarizes these aspects as five factors and seven considerations, which involve a detailed examination of social and political factors, timing and geographical advantages, qualities of commanders, soldiers' capabilities, organizational structure, and more. Only by considering these factors, as Sun Tzu suggests, can we assess the probability of victory. In Sun Tzu's chapter on calculations, he mentions the five factors and states, therefore, in using the military, one measures the following five factors and makes comparisons of the various conditions of the antagonistic sides in order to determine the outcome of military actions. The term measures here refers to comparison. Advantages and disadvantages are relative, so Sun Tzu mentions, making comparisons of the various conditions between the opposing sides. This is another methodology in Sun Tzu's thinking, we must not only understand ourselves but also understand the enemy, then make comparisons, identify the gaps, and seek to bridge them. So, what do the five factors specifically refer to? Sun Tzu mentions, the first is moral law, the second is heaven, the third is earth, the fourth is the commander, and the fifth is method. Since the five factors cover a wide range of topics, and considering the limited time of the video, I will divide the analysis of the five factors into three videos. Therefore, for the remaining time, I will share my understanding of the moral law with you. In Sun Tzu's The Art of War, moral law is considered the most crucial factor. Sun Tzu states, the moral law causes the people to be in complete accord with their ruler, so that they will follow him regardless of their lives, undismayed by any danger. This means that moral law can unite the hearts and wills of the people with their ruler, making them willingly and courageously sacrifice their lives for the ruler and even the country, without fearing danger. From this, we can see that moral law refers to public sentiment and involves the political aspects of war. The outcome of a war must have the support and endorsement of the people to make accurate judgments. As Mencius said, heaven does not favor one who does not conform to the right path, nor does earth favor one who does not conform to the advantageous position. People are the most important. The term people here refers to moral law. The saying, when you gain the support of the people, you will have many helpers, when you lose the support of the people, you will have few helpers, highlights the significance of moral law, which represents the attitudes and consensus of the people. Confucianism also emphasizes the importance of moral law, so there are times when the thoughts of different schools converge. Therefore, understanding and grasping the importance of moral law, and how to gain the support of the people are crucial factors that cannot be ignored in strategic planning. In the business field, the concept of moral law can also be applied. As the top leader of a company, your decisions and vision determine the future direction of the company. However, the success and effectiveness of your decisions rely not solely on you, but more on whether your subordinates and employees accept and cooperate with them. If your subordinates and employees do not accept your decisions or cooperate with your plans, even if your vision is admirable, it cannot be realized. Therefore, as a leader, you need to understand the psychology of your employees, their needs, and expectations, and strive to meet their requirements as much as possible in order to gain their support and cooperation. Only when employees wholeheartedly commit to implementing your vision and decisions can your goals be effectively implemented and achieved. 
This requires establishing good communication and trust between leaders and employees, inspiring their motivation and sense of belonging. By paying attention to their needs, listening to their opinions and suggestions, and providing appropriate incentives and rewards, you can better obtain the support and cooperation of employees, making them willing to work hard to achieve the company's goals. Therefore, when formulating decisions and visions, leaders need to consider not only the company's interests but also the interests and psychological needs of employees. They should maintain a good relationship with employees and inspire their motivation and teamwork spirit through effective communication and management, thereby jointly achieving the company's development objectives. The video is coming to an end. Thank you all for watching our third video, where we delved into the strategic tactics in The Art of War by Sun Tzu. In this episode, we gained a deeper understanding of the importance of strategic planning according to The Art of War, including the concepts of the five factors and the seven measures, as well as the significance of the core element, moral law, in strategy. Through this learning, we recognize the crucial role of meticulous strategic planning and garnering popular support in achieving victory in warfare. In the next episode, we will further explore the strategic role of heaven in the art of war. Heaven plays a significant role in the book, encompassing not only the natural environment and weather conditions but also the grasp and utilization of the overall situation. We will delve into the strategic considerations of heaven in the art of war and how it can be employed to achieve war objectives. If you are interested in strategic tactics and wish to continue exploring the wisdom of the art of war, remember to subscribe to our channel so you won't miss our latest videos. By subscribing, you will be the first to receive our updates and exciting content. Thank you all for your support and attention. We look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Goodbye.